Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous. Where last time we made the long, long journey down to Canaveras. It took three days, I think? Something like that. Maybe four. Uh, but we made it here. We have come to Nethholm. And uh, we just talked to Chief Sol. And Winduog has returned. I also forgot we got some new chain mail from one of our crusade fights. And we're going to give this... To Daren. Oh yeah, that is made for Daren. Look at that. Perfect. Uh, but yeah, now we have to go. She kidnapped... Oh, what was her name? I, I know I just heard it. Dyrol? Something like that. Uh, the merchant that was here who was very obsessed with the surface. Um, and we we're going to go get her back and probably kill Winduag because we're not a very merciful person when it comes to crime. Uh, secret hideout. Let us press on. Windowog. Windowog, sitting over a corpse that has been ripped to shreds, looks up and notices you. Look who's back. Did Sol come crying that I was holding Daira hostage? What a snitch. Dyra was her name, and it looks like she's not going to make it. Land shudders. You. You knew her. She was one of us. So what if I knew her? What does it matter? I do what I want. I don't care what other people think. You killed one of your own. I make sacrifices to Sava Malak in exchange for his blessings. But this fool, oh, her I killed for pleasure. I clawed her heart out with my own bare hands. Windowog smiles. You are absolutely insane. Admit it, Windu. You've, you're just broken. Windowog chuckles. Keep underestimating me, Lan. You'll die with that same surprised look on your face. How does this help you? Now Sol will know you have nothing to hold over him. Windowog licks her lips, her eyes glowing green in the dark. Will he find out? How exactly? Do you really think you're getting out of here? Yeah. You're alone. We can easily overpower you. I'm not alone, Lan. My master has not left me. Even now I feel his cold breath on my neck. Windowog's voice drips, drops to a whisper. He is watching. Lan looks around. There's no one here. He doesn't have to be here to know and see everything. So you've been hiding in this cave this whole time, like a rat. Windowog stretches and licks her lips lazily. Attack me, and you'll, and you'll find out how I've been spending my time. We've been killing demons, and you've been practicing on cave slugs? It won't be much of a fair fight. I had a good teacher. He opened my eyes to many things, my master Savamalek. Enough talking, you murderer. Alright, let's see what she's got. Let's see how, how well Savamalek has taught her. All right, she failed that right off the bat, so already she's weaker than I expected. Land's not holding anything back. Uh, I gotta move up. Precise, precise strike, six attacks. Windrug jumps back, clutching at her wound, but immediately falls to her knees. Enough! That's enough! I want to talk to you. Damn, Lan just like... Lan had a better teacher, I'm just saying. <laughs> what is there to talk about? It's not too late yet. I... I... The unworthy Windowog will serve you. You... I realize now you are the chosen one of the gods. There has never been anyone like you. Allow me to become your slave. Lan looks at his former friend with unconcealed revulsion. This is too much even for you. Stop it. I can't watch you humiliate yourself. I don't know who you are, but you're not Winduog. I will be everything my master commands. Good Diplomacy 32. You've made a lot of mistakes, Windwag, but you can atone for them. Admitting your weakness is the only path to true strength. 
evil. Serving in the crusade is truly an honor, but you are not worthy of it. You are too easy to defeat. You are not even worthy of becoming my slave. Damn. Do you understand now that the power given to you by the demon is worth nothing? You don't need the so-called gifts of the abyss to become stronger. You are an interesting specimen of a dumb but stubborn creature. <laughs> Leave while you can. Fine, you may join me. You deserve death for what you've done. You deserve death for what you've done. You. You are stronger than me, yes. This is the right of the strong. To decide who lives and who dies. Windowog cringes. You think you have the right to condemn me because some higher beings noticed you? No. Your strength gives you the right to decide. Only your strength. You're raving, Lu You're raving, Windu. You don't understand anything, Lan. The strong can do anything. They can live and decide who else lives or dies. But that will never be you. You're weak inside and always will be. Barrett, are you going to kill me because I will surpass you? Are you? Tell me. Lan lowers his voice talking to you. Tell her what she wants to hear. Even a deranged mind deserves one last mercy. Um, Killing you will be like squashing a fly. Don't flatter yourself. Yes, by killing you now, I will eliminate a serious opponent in the future. Kill her without a word. Well, maybe you will say something, Lan. After all the years we spent together? Lan looks at her steadily. May your soul find peace wherever it ends up. Since it clearly didn't find it here. Damn. That was cool. I liked that. I wonder what would have happened if you let her join you. Would she have become a companion? You see, with her, I, I feel like... Oh, man, if she would have become a companion, maybe I should have taken her with us. So we would have seen it. But at the same time, like... Th 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 there's one thing... Letting a, a demon, a succubus demon, join our party who's trying to be good. There's another thing of, you know, recruiting a selfish playboy. Or a potential torturer? I don't even know Camellia. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, but uh, who's our other question? Wolgif or, you know, uh, a desperate thief into our group. There's another thing letting in... Windowog, who we just saw cannibalizing, I probably, or at least butchering the corpse of somebody she killed for fun, almost, uh, into our party. Heavy Mace of Fire, we'll take it all. I don't know if I could have reconciled us letting her in, especially since it's kind of like. We're letting her be our servant. The body of Daira, the Mongol trader, has been ripped apart as if by a pack of wild animals. And where is uh, Savar Malik? Where is he at? I hope you appreciate this. Merciless shot. The wearer of this ring gets a plus one bonus to attack while using point blank shot. Very nice. That's going on Lan. Feels like it's only fair that he gets it. Uh, what is your wisdom? Give you this too. Give you more wisdom. Did that affect his attack? Oh, it did. I didn't know it affected his attack. And his armor class. I knew it affected armor class. I've forgotten it affected attack too. Nice. Alright. Well, that was a lot faster than I thought it was going to be. Let's head back to Sol. Goodbye, Windowog. It, it, it was really cool seeing just how much power we've gained. How quickly we were able to just destroy her. I thought maybe she was telling the truth and she had got some like magic buff from Sava Malik, But no, she was just as weak as she was. Maybe yeah, she probably wasn't as weak as she was. I mean, we hit her with like five, you know, 30 damage attacks. Where are we going? We need to go up here. But yeah. It is fitting that Lan got her number there. Just destroyed her. 
You returned. Good for you. What a Dyra. What a Windwog. One of the Mongols looks at you gloomily. You couldn't save her, could you? Len, you went up against Windwog. That's tough enough. None of us had the guts. It's good that you didn't. Sol is old. He couldn't have buried all those bodies. But now everything's over. No one is threatening you anymore. Unfortunately, Dyra is dead, but Windwog has paid for her death with her own. Sol lowers his head. We've lost two of our own, Dyra and Windwog. I suppose there must be some curse on us, a black stain on all our lives. No more dark times, Chief. We're going up, starting over. Enough talking. You're in my army now. Move. We can't put it off anymore. It's time for the underground crusaders to become crusaders on the surface. So lets out a coarse, gurgling sigh. Well, when it's time, it's time. Lead on, Lan. Lan raises his head in defense. Hands in defense. No, no. Barrett is our commander. He will lead you. Sol turns to you and straightens up with effort. Well, Commander, thank you for forgetting for not forgetting us. We are Crusaders. Crusaders, rather. You are the Crusade Commander. Lead the way. We shall follow. A new era has dawned for mongrels. For the first time in decades, they are going up to the surface. Uh, show completed quests. I want to read that. Is this it? No. Oh, that's the wrong, uh, wrong section. Uh, I kind of want to read all of these, actually. Got to remember to do these. Probably some interesting things in here. Hmm. What was this one called? Back to Roots. A new era has dawned for mongrels. For the first time in decades, they are going to the surface. And all this is thanks to the tireless efforts of one of their own, Lan. But will this exodus bring only good? It's rather ominous, huh? Alright, let's head on out. Goodbye, Nethholm, huh? Probably the last time we're going to see it. I have to say, Nethholm is a really cool thing like the entire little prologue here was actually really interesting it gives me it it's very reminiscent of uh natural republic where you go to the terrace underground or whatever it's called it reminds me of that a little bit obviously not like in design or anything like artistically but just narratively you have these people forgotten under a great civilization a great city Where, where are you? Why are you not... What's going on with you? But now... Now we get to begin the long trek all the way back to Day... Or not Daron, <laughs> Dresden. But first I think we're going to stop in the Market Square. Location is not available. Okay, never mind. We gotta travel all the way out of the city. Which takes us five hours to get out of the city. My goodness. I have to plan a day just to get out of the city. I guess, you know, going over chasms and stuff does take some time. All right. And take a look at our resources, see if we can't do some more building. All right. Our enemies have made progress. Uh, I don't think we have enough building supplies, or building materials to do anything. So is it just that army there, the level five? I thought there was a level four army down here. Yeah, there is. Okay. Somewhere. Or maybe not. Yeah, there is. This army right here. Good to know. I gotta remember to use this more. And what does this do? Party teleportation. Did that work? Oh, 
Oh, that's incredible. I'm, I'm, I'm not smart. <laughs> that works out. All right, we're back at Dresden. Perfect. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and enter Dresden. That makes things a lot easier, huh? I thought I had to like go to a fort that had a teleportation circle, and then teleport to Dresden. I didn't know I could just teleport wherever, unless there's one in Canabras, in which case I wasted all those hours uh, traveling, those days traveling. I don't think there is one in Canabras though. But we got a lot of business at the War Council, I think. Ember. Some say that being a kind person is hard work, that most people can't do it. Is that true? Look at the people standing next to you. Don't you want to love these people? Is it so hard to smile at them? To say a kind word? To share with those in need? Don't you feel joy when you do something good for others? And isn't it wonderful when they do the same for you? Kindness is the easiest and most pleasant thing in the world. A crowd has gathered in the street. Young and old, civ civilians and soldiers, everyone is listening to the frail elf girl, captivated by her de delicate voice as it rings out. And what about ungrateful assholes, huh? You do good for them, and they just shit on you in return. Just don't be like them. And don't get angry at these people. They, won't kn they don't know what they're, what they're doing. Don't abandon them to their silliness and sins. Keep doing good, and you will see. Sooner or later, they will realize... What, 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 realize they are doing wrong. Is she like getting a cult following right now? <laughs> you should teach them about obeying the authorities and the law, not vague notions of kindness. Um, what is this meeting? This? I, I'm just talking to good people who want to listen. That girl can talk. Of course, no one's going to live by her sermons, but listening to them is nicer than listening to bards and their songs. Speak for yourself, sinner. I feel myself getting better, kinder, and more spiritual after every sermon. Really? Well, do a good deed, then. Give me something for your shop, from your shop for free. <laughs> the end of the squabble is drowned out by the laughter of the crowd. Enough of this nonsense. Your preaching won't make anyone kinder. Rawr! Uh, listen to her. She will teach you to live good lives. Right, Commander. That's for sure. Thank you for your kind words. I'm not saying anything special. These are simple things. Everyone knows them. Come on. Keep talking. One man claps his hands. Others join in with claps and cries of encouragement. All right. I was talking about being kind to your neighbors. And look, the Commander decided to set an example. The girl keeps preaching. Yeah, so she's starting her own, like, little cult following. Religion sort of thing. Philosophy. Something. Cool. And that's a new quest. The Wayward. An insane preacher telling a laughing crowd about love, kindness, and nobility of spirit. An ordinary sight in the streets. Every city has its idiots. Oftentimes, when the crowd grows tired of listening to sermons, it finds a new entertainment by dragging the preacher to the stake. Oh, jeez. But this girl has already been tossed on the pyre and survived. And despite it all, she continues to appeal to the people's better nature. Will she achieve more than others of her ilk? Who's to say? Probably. I mean, she's one of my companions, so she's destined for greatness. Because I'm destined for greatness. Wait to see how things unfold. The mob loves a wretch. A feeble-minded, hysterical, and starry-eyed preacher. When one of these unfortunates stands, out, stands on a corner and begins their sermon, a crowd will immediately gather... Some will laugh, some will cry, some will toss a coin at their feet. But will any of them listen? Will they do as they are told? The obvious conclusion, of course they won't. But let, let's let leave our biases aside as we observe how the throngs of Dresden respond to the ex exhortations of a ragged elf, elf girl. Cool. The people in the city seem to like your sermons. Are those sermons? I just tell people things, simple things. Anyone can figure them out. People are much cleverer than me, but they listen to me and say thanks and say thank you after. I probably just have a pretty voice. So go. Hmm. We do want to go stop by land, see if he has anything to, uh, to talk about. I think we want to say stop by Saucial too. I don't know if we've talked to him since we've. Uh, done the gambling quest. 
What brings you here? Um, now, now you're not the only mongrel on the surface. Got any plans for the future? You people have come to the surface. Does this mean you are no longer nethers? Ha! That is a good question. We're not fully uplanders yet. I think we know... I think we are now uplander nethers. Although, if you think about it, we used to be nether uplanders. After all, our ancestors came to the caves from the surface, and now I've given myself a headache. <laughs> Maybe I'll leave the task of renaming our people for better time. For a better time. Now you're not the only mongrel on the surface. Got any plans for the future? Plans? <laughs> you have too high an opinion of me. To be honest, I've never had a less a plan than I do right now. I thought everything would be simple. We'd go to the surface, become crusaders, and somehow figure things out later. But later is now. Saul tells me not to rush things, but he always says that. If I listen to him, I'll have moss growing out of my ears before a single thing changes. One thing's for sure. As long as you're our leader, there, there is hope. Aww. Things are always happening around you, and it, and it made me realize that I need to stick with you. If I do, one day I'll find myself scaling a citadel of evil... A bow blessed by all the gods clamped between my between my teeth, about to plant an arrow in the chest of some ancient evil demon. I certainly hope that happens, and I hope that bow is blessed by the greatest god of all, Barad. Uh, thank you for your answers. All right, let's go talk to Saucio. See if he's been. What is this? What is it? See if he's been uh, staying away from the dice. I do want to look on the map and see if uh, Chief Soul is anywhere, too. Is Baird supposed to be here? Or not Baird, is Saucio? It says on the map he is. But I can't see him. Uh, Chief Soul is down there. We're going back down there. We want to talk to Chief Soul. And then I guess we're going to... I think the next thing we were going to do is going to head up to uh, Wolgif's place. Although we still have some things to do in the council chambers or whatever we want to call them. Crusader HQ. Chief Sol. I said no. Stop asking me, Chief. Sol stands slouching, staring in the ground. You have to, Len. Look at me. I'm old. What do I know? Caves. And you? You know everything around here. Yes, you do. You are young and strong. You can last a dozen years. You've always said I'm not one I'm not one of you. How can I be chief now? I'm a loner by nature. Who's going to listen to me? Half the time I don't even listen to, I don't even listen to me. It's a new time for Nit for Nethersh, Lan. You're young. And you're and you're from the new time. They're confused up here, under the sky. But they'll get used to it. I won't. I know nothing here. You know everything. The chief is right, Lan. You have all the qualities of a good commander. I believe in you. With age, a person becomes rigid, unwilling to adapt to changes and accept new ideas. And that's not what the Mongols need. They need you, Lan. A decrepit old man can't command an army. And I need a commander, Lan. Do I have to, do I have to describe him as decrepit? That's kind of... Stop being so stubborn, Lan. Being chief is an honor. So quit playing coy and accept what I'm offering. Am I offering it? You're right, Lan. You're not fit to be a commander. Um. Stop being so stubborn, Lan. Being a chief is an honor. I kind of like the evil option. I feel like the lawful option seems a little bit more evil than this one. I guess the evil part is saying I'm offering it. I do like the good one too. Man, I feel like we've been good too much. We need we need a little bit of evil evil in our in our blood. And you know, with with Barrett's whole god complex, he probably does think being a chief would be an honor, right? I'm like, come on, man, what are you doing? 
Succeeded at diplomacy check. Land size heavily. Eh, if even you are on his side. All right, I'll give it a shot. But when my dear mongrels come running to you, crying and demanding sold back, don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> they won't even remember old Shoal with you around. Hey, don't rush me into becoming chief. I, I meant that I'll give it a try. Nothing more than that. And after a few days, I'll come to you, Commander, with a report. Just you wait. Good. Chief Soul looks around uncertainly. Uplanders, nothing sh like it's supposed to be. What, what is it, Commander? How's life on the surface for the mongrels? They are frightened. But they're trying not to show it. One of them was pulled out of the sewage. He couldn't take it. He couldn't take it in the open. Decided to live in there. But they're all very curious. And when you're curious, you stop being frightened. Lan is keeping an eye on them. He doesn't bother me unless he needs to. They keep calling us tieflings here. The young ones pick fights. But it will pass. No one's trying to drive us out. So that's something at least. What do you think of life on the surface? Truth be told, it's frightening. Strange sounds. No ceiling. Smells like something. It's hard here. And then again, I don't cough as much as I did down there. The shun is nice too. Oh, and I go to the priests of Iomede. They give some nice sermons. Just lovely. And still, this is not my world. Shh for young ones. How's Lan getting on with his responsibilities? Sol hot sighs heavily. He doesn't want to, but it can't be helped. Everyone goes to him with their troubles and cares. He's caring, our Lan. He's kind, like his father used to be. He helps everyone, and when I say he'd make a good chief, he gets all riled up like I just called him a cave slug. Strange, but he might be one of us after all, more than I thought. You've satisfied my curiosity. Trust my pleasure. Godspeed. All right. Now let's go up to the Citadel, actually. Got to remember our shortcut. Hello, Arabeth. Commander, unexpected reinforcements have arrived. Not from the Queen this time. These are volunteers. A group of Kelid barbarians uh, have come all have come. All of them seasoned fighters. They wish to serve under your command. This tribe seems to be seems to have a bone to pick with demons. They believe that ravaging Sarkoris made demons the personal made the demons the personal enemies of all the peoples of the north. They are proud that you're a human, just like them. Well, I don't know about that, okay. <laughs> they say that as soon as they heard about your deeds in Canabras and Dresden, they knew that a true chief had finally come. I'm not sure accepting them in the army would be such a great idea. Is there any other way they can be helped to the crusade? Of course I'll let them join my army. 18 barbarians are recruited. Or 2,500 finance points. Uh, we'll take the barbarians, sure. As you say, Commander, the recruits will be at your disposal shortly. Although 2,500 finance points probably would have been better in the end. Uh, Arabeth, Commander, I didn't want to bother you with this, but we received a letter from Nerissian. It's from the Dalmora family, who hold considerable sway in the royal court. Count uh, Orvin Dalmora of Omiravan is an officer in the army. He hasn't written home in a while, and his parents are worried. He was here in Dresden, but he disappeared during a skirmish with demons in the wound. To be honest, it seems they were more worried about the fate of his armor, which is apparently a family heirloom, than they were about the fate of their middle son. They mention the armor every other sentence. I don't think the officer is alive, but we might be able to find the armor and send it to Marissian. The skirmish took place near Wintersun, and it's possible the locals may know something. Back to Wintersun! Uh, a search for armor? I don't have time for this now. Maybe later. I'll look into it. Yes, Commander. If the armor is recovered without its owner, I will immediately have it sent to Nerissian. Lots of business, Arabeth. Arabeth looks extremely worried. Commander, do you remember Private Gorvo? Ah, yes. Who killed his commanding officer? 
It turns out his case is more complicated than just a dispute over a woman. Our investigation has revealed tensions that are brewing between the officers and the rank and file, and I'd like to talk about it, talk to you about it. What's the general sentiment among the officers? What's the general sentiment among the rank and file? What do you think? What do the officers think? They deny all accusations with such unanimity unanimi, unanimi, that they are undoubtedly conspiring together. Many of them come from noble families. They receive their titles simply by virtue of their birthright. They treat soldiers like servants and toys and speak despairingly of them. But other than that, there are no complaints about them. They have been educated and trained well and have proven themselves on the battlefield. If we simply proceed with this case and demote them, we will quell the unrest among the rank and file, but we will lose the support of the officers. And the rank and file? Erebeth sighs. They are ready to riot. What Gorvo did inspired them. There are rumors being spread about attempts to execute some of the officers without waiting for the trial, and lists of the officers' names have been circulating. They are waiting for your decision, and they hope that you will acquit Corvo, Gorvo and punish those who are responsible for hurting him. But I think that as long as you pronounce Gorvo not guilty, that will be enough to placate them. And what do you think? I know my words won't go beyond these walls, so I'll say it like this. I dislike Lelin and those he protects. I'm sorry that Gorvo, who served you loyally in the, in the cause of the crusade, was driven to murder and almost suicide at the cruel whims of others. Whatever the outcome of the case, the fact that this was allowed to happen in the first place is a stain on, the, on our entire army. Don't worry. Both Gorvo and those who hurt him will receive a fair trial. Let's begin. Aerith nods. Yes, Commander. I believe that you are fair and that you listen to your heart when making such consequential decisions. Well, <laughs> we'll see. Private Gorvo is accused of murdering Damar, his commanding officer. The murder was committed with a dagger in the barracks in the presence of more than three witnesses. Private Gorvo claims he did it out of desperation and fear of the torture inflicted by Damar on his soldiers. Some of the witnesses we interrogated confirm his account, and some claim the murder was committed out of revenge because Gorvo's lover chose Damar over him. However, we failed to locate this woman. She was last seen in Canabras. What do you have to say? What do you have to say to this defendant? The same thing I said before. Damar was a scoundrel and a sad sadist. And Officer Lelan, who's been crying on every corner that it's all the fault of some woman, has always covered for Damar and his friends. I had no choice but to kill Damar. And if the commander can see through pe can see through people as they say, the truth will come out. Commander, before you deliver your verdict, remember that a rash decision in this case might lower the army's morale. Damar is not the only officer taking advantage of his position. There are many more, but if we demote them all, we won't have enough officers. If we execute Gorvo, on the other hand, the soldiers will revolt. The soldiers will revolt. Many consider him a hero. Ah, I was wondering if Malize would say something. It takes a good deal of finesse to thread the needle, doesn't it? But remember the document you signed right before the murder? In order for the officer Damar to appear before the court and answer for all the atrocities he has committed, Malize lowers his voice conspiratorially and looks you in the eye. Perhaps the order slipped your mind, or it might have been lost. But I'm sure such a document exists, if you need it in a difficult situation. Interesting. Erebeth looks baffled, but I didn't hear about any... Unless you were conducting your own secret investigation. Okay. <sighs> so, we have three choices here. Number one. I have made my decision. Private Gorvo shall be executed for the murder of a superior officer as the law requires. Officer Lelin shall be stripped of all rank for his for his deception, and Officer Damar should be stripped of all rank post posthumously. Uh, the investigation shall not end here. I have made my decision. Private Gorvo shall be pardoned but sent to the condemned. Officer Lelin shall be stripped of all rank and imprisoned, and Officer Daman, Damar shall be stripped of all rank post humor, humor, whatever that word is, after death. <laughs> I made my decision a long time ago. The order for Damar to appear before the court was signed the day before Gorvo murdered him. Now all I can do is send Gorvo to the condemned. 
the order for Damar to appear before the court. Okay, so I think I understand. So Malai is, is going to forge a contract. Is that what he's saying? He's forged a con he's gonna forge a contract saying Damar is going to come to the court to answer for his crimes before the murder. Hmm. That's an interesting one. Let me uh, review what Malai said again. Perhaps the order slipped your mind, or it might have been lost, but I'm sure such a document exists if you need it in a difficult situation. It sounds like he's forging the document, right? I am interested in it, mainly because, you know, the odds are if we ever play this game again, we probably won't be favorable to devils. How much influence would Malai's have over Barad? Barad, who is an avid worshipper of Asmodeus, grew up in Cheliax, is a Hell Knight, Hmm. This is a little tough. So Gorva would go to the, the condemned. Uh, hmm. So the possible outcomes of number three, right? I guess the rank and file would be satisfied because we were already going to be looking in. We were already looking into Damar. Right, so they'll be satisfied and Gorvo isn't killed. So they'd be satisfied that their commander's looking out for them. Presumably. The officers would be satisfied because they're still going to stay in power. And the rank and file are placated. But that wouldn't solve the issue, right? I mean, this would just come up later, again later. Presumably. Ah. We're going to go with option one. I think. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, we need to decide. Option one or three. One or three. Option one. I've made my decision. Private Gorvo shall be executed for the murder of a superior officer, as the law requires. Officer Leland shall be stripped of all rank for his deception, and Officer Damar shall be stripped of all rank after death. Uh, <laughs> the investigation shall not end here, meaning we're going to continue to investigate. Gorvo, I will give you all their names. Punish them before some other idiot lose, loses it and dies for nothing. The investigation will continue, Commander, but I don't know what will happen to your army. Or who will lead the soldiers into battle if you demote everyone? Uh, I never said I was demoting everyone. Like, I don't know where that, that notion comes from. If they are committing a crime, I don't care how talented they are. Demote their asses. Like, it's, it's a simple thing. If, if you're following the law, you'd have nothing to worry about. Damn freaking people. They should know me by now. Paralictor Eminos Rinth. They approach as if in military formation, in lockstep arranged, arranged so that the tallest, a white-haired elf, occupies the central position, flanked by the other two. At the same time, it does not seem as though any of the three is the leader. Knight Commander Barad, we are representatives of the Hell Knights in the No Man's Lands in the No Man's Land of the World Wound. Paralector Aminos Rinth from the Order of the Gate. Paralector Lerana Tai from the Order of the Pike. And Perilictor Garen De Deothan from the Order of the Pyre. Hey guys. After introducing themselves, all three turn to Reggie in unison and give a curt nod. The elf, Perilictor Aminos Rinth, uh, Aminos or Aminos? Aminos Rinth, turns his gaze on you. His voice is dry and his speech is f uh, fastidiously formal. 
We have come to offer to officially greet the commander of the Fifth Crusade on behalf of the Coalition of the Hell Knight Orders. The Orders have been and remain fundamentally opposed to demons and demon worshippers. We will continue to act in, in the no man's land of the world wound as an allied force to your armies. The second goal of our mission is, is discussing your formal status as a member within the Coalition of Hell Knight Orders. Finally! Oh, thank goodness. I welcome our honored allies to Dresden. Thank you, Com Knight Commander. And allow us to congratulate you on your victory in the battle for Dresden. Any updates on my official status in the ranks of the Hell Knights? Your request has generated a number of formal problems. However, all of them were solvable. First, as you are aware, prior to, to being accepted into the ranks of, the, of an order, the candidate must undergo a series of tests, including a one-on-one -on -one fight with the devil. However, the order has de deemed it appropriate to count your outstanding victories uh, over various demons, in particular uh, Nukoneth, as an initiation fight. Thank you. The second, much more pressing, much more pressing issue is the question of command and subordination. We cannot pronounce the Knight Commander of the Fifth Crusade as subordinate of any order without complicated diplomatic relations with the Mendev and the Crusade movement as a whole. However, we stand prepared to undertake an under unprecedented step to consider you a full Hell Knight who is not subordinated to any lictor or vi vicarious of the order. And one last thing. I am authorized to provide you with a set of Hell Knight armor as mandates as mandated by our, our regulations. Steel Helm, Adamantine, Full Plate, plus three. It, are you willing to participate? It's probably not going to be better than my armor from Staunton, but really nice anyway. Are you willing to participate in joint operations? My army needs support. That is not possible at this moment in time. The orders are following their own plans. The majority of our forces are deployed far to the west. We are thereby helping you by drawing by drawing the attention of the demon armies. Paralector uh Derringes Daring Der um, decision to hand over part of his force for you to command. Uh that's that's Reggie's last name, isn't it? Was done on his own initiative. But the other orders and even the and even other chapters of the Order of of the God Claw have their own objectives. Is that all you wanted to say? One more thing. Our chapters, together with the troop led by Paralictor Derenge, intend to establish an outpost, or rather, a fortified transfer point for, for our operations. We have found suitable ruins from the First Crusade, and we have begun making them fit for habitation. When the outpost is ready, you will be entitled, as our ally, to make use of the facilities for rest and sustenance when you are making forays deeper into the wound. Nice! On that, we shall take our leave, Knight Commander. We're an official Hell Knight. Amazing. Markle. So many strange, terrible things are happening here. Markle, a fisherman from, from the tiny, peaceful village of Chili Creek, enters the hall. I saw enough horrors on my way here to last a lifetime. But of course, I didn't show up empty-handed. The whole village took up a collection for the war effort. It's not much, mind you, but it's something. We're just doing our part, however small, to help you win the war. Diplomacy plus 2,180. Nice. How'd you get here? By pure luck, I figure. You're surrounded by all this, all this horror. The land is dead. The trees are gnarled and twisted. There are monsters roaming around everywhere, ready to jump out at you at any moment. Thankfully, I ran into a crusader patrol, and they brought me here. If it wasn't for them, I would have ended up, ended my trip in the teeth of some nasty beast, that's for sure. How are things in the village? Everything's been peaceful and quiet. I get wistful thinking, wistful just thinking about it. Now I'm kicking myself for being such a fool. Why don't I just stay at home? Why was I, what was I thinking, dragging myself all the way out here into the world wound? But you know it's just not right, sitting home quietly, hiding behind the heroes who risk their necks for us every day. So I decided to pay you a visit. How's Drano doing? He's settling in, that's for sure. Almost one of us now. Heals the sick, fixes the nets with others. Before you know it, he'll be learning how to swim. The fisherman chuckles good-naturedly. Naturedly. Uh, would you like to stay here with us? No, thank you. Hate to say it, but I'm no crusader. Fighting demons is not really my thing. I'll give 
I'll get some rest before I head out. Take a day, day or two to look around the fortress. It'll give me some nice stories to tell. Then I'll head back home to Chili Creek. I've already, bit, I've already seen more on this trip than I've seen in a lifetime. Anyway, you better come back to see us. We'll be waiting. Thanks for coming to visit. Thank you for defending our peace and quiet. The fisherman bows respectfully. We've gathered up something else for, your, for, you, for you heroes, but I couldn't bring it with me. It was too heavy to carry. Come to our village and you can pick it up yourself and pay us, pay us a visit while you're at it. We're always glad to see you. Well, I'll see you later. Good luck with all the fighting. Hmm. I feel a little suspicious about that. All right. Is that all the business we have right now? Malize? What do you think of my judgments? Your judgment is incredibly thoughtful and impartial, Commander. But if you really want to know my opinion, sometimes you are too inflexible. There are many situations from which we all can benefit, while still obeying the letter of the law. I'm willing to offer my suggestions, of course, if you're willing to listen. I, don't, I do not mean to imply that your judgments are wrong, not at all. But your subjects, I mean your soldiers, are people with weaknesses and shortcomings. It is befitting for your wise ruler to show some leniency. I have to go. I'll always be close by, Commander. Yeah, he probably wanted us... I mean, obviously he wanted us to go with his idea, but... I don't... I don't know how his idea would have led to lasting security for the army. Uh... Alright, we can do this now. So we just got chain mail. We're gonna go with the belt. The commander's servants have carried out the decree. Good. Anything else we need? Yeah, we got some other things we can do. We can rank up our military. They who do not seek to know their enemy and fail to forge new paths to victory will inevitably fall. The secret of success lies in officers' steadfast focus on strategy, the ability to learn from past experiences, and the preparation of soldiers for future battles. Issued that decree. What else can we do? Can do some stuff with the relics. And that's it. Okay. So which relic do we want to increase next? I guess we'll just go... They're all diplomacy. Let's go with this one. A skilled craftsman can do some work on the relic. It is rather expensive. We're gonna do it though. Okay. Um, let us go ahead and see if we can build anything. We just spilt, or spilt, built, or used up some material points, so there's a chance we don't have anything to build. Yeah, just another mercenary, or hospital. Let's just take a look around real quick. We're building things at Keeper's Canyon. Looks like this has been built. Mm, we could build more. So we could build a supply tower. And a hospital. Or a supply center and a hospital. Can't build both of them. Uh, we're going to go with a supply center first, though. There we go. That's probably all we can buy. For now. The supply centers are useful. We'll get more materials out of them. We'll probably want to build one at every fort, I'd imagine. Okay. Let's go ahead and leave the map here. And I think we're going to head up to Wolgif's quest next. Probably not going to get to it in this episode, but uh, we'll see how far we get. All right. Do we need to sleep? Probably do, actually. Let's go ahead and rest. Because I don't think we've rested since, um... Since Canabra, since Nethholm. Uh, let's go ahead and get a Scroll of Rage created. And craft that. 18 hours of sleep. 
Camellia. Come now, Sila. Don't be such a sourpuss. I'm trying earnestly to be a good comrade. I would dearly like to chat with you. You're a strange girl, Cammy. Always so pleasant, like a chir chirruping bird, but strange nonetheless. I agree. When are we going to find out more about her? One day. Oh. Hello. Captain Odin. Captain Odin salutes you and looks over the military council intently. Our intelligence was correct. Uh, Koromezda's Korem host marches on Dresden. In his position, the wisest course of action upon reaching the walls would be to lay siege and wear down our forces with new, new, nuance raids. However, my experience tells me that he will act differently. This is going to be a full-on assault, a decisive display of his power. When the enemy moves in on our positions, position, we must meet them with a hail of arrows from the walls, gaining the full advantage of our superior defense pos defensive positions. To prepare our army for this battle, I propose to pass a reform reform and increase the presence of ranged troops in our ranks. I believe light armed slingers, a great number of whom can be trained quickly, will be adequate for our purposes. And once the demons get to them, every one of our every one of those slingers will be slaughtered. I said we only recruit experienced, seasoned rangers who have traveled far and wide and know how to defend themselves in any situation. Captain Odin is correct to assume that our ranged troops can manage with light armaments. However, the troops themselves must be of exemplary quality, quality to complete the task at hand. I suggest, I suggest we pick the most adept archers we have and have them undergo rigorous training until they become true marksmen. Greybore smiles condescendingly. In my experience, in a fight with a dozen quick and accurate archers, the most valuable among them is the one who knows how to pick the right target. You don't learn to f you learn you don't learn that kind of skill on the archery range only in action. Call some headhunters, hard-boiled cutthroats who live by their ability to put an arrow in the eye of a moving target. Why is he so intent on reclaiming Dresden? By capturing the city. We have gone on the offensive for the first time in decades. We have broken the established mold. That which is taken by demons rarely escapes their grasp. The liberation of Dresden could become a symbol of new hope for mortal kind. And, Cor and Cora seeks to smother that hope in its cradle. Moreover, Dresden is a well-positioned foothold that threatens both the world wound and, an and northern Mendev. Cora cannot fail to appreciate its significance. But there is also a more pragmatic reason. Back in the day, Korra planned to capture Dresden himself, but, Nog but Monago beat him to it. If he takes it back now, he will finally have his glory, as well as further humiliating Monago. Greybore, you're not a soldier. What are you doing here? Greybore puffs out his pipe, puffs his pipe, and after a short pause, says with dignity, "True, I'm not a soldier. However, I have a better understanding of killing than most. Besides." The fact that I'm not a professional soldier means I can offer you a fresh perspective and give you advice that would never occur to you occur to a career officer. Opinion of survivors or uh, uh, counselors? Why Ranger Sila? We can't bolster our ranks with hunters and shepherds who can't who can shoot an arrow but don't know anything about melee combat. War is not shooting uh, partridges out of the sky. The demons it could break, it could easily break through our ranks and attack our archers. And what happens then? A massacre that will leave us digging graves for a bunch of boys and girls. Rangers, on the other hand, spend their whole lives traveling, and they know what it's like to rely on on no one but themselves. They're battle hardened, and they can wield both a bow and a blade to fend off dangerous foes if needed be. That sounds pretty good. In worrying about the lives of individual soldiers, we must not put their safety above expediency. The price of defeat will be the loss of the entire army, not just a few soldiers. True. Reggie, tell me more about snipers. If we take a hundred archers and work them to the bone in time, we will discover a dozen with zeal and talent. With zeal talent. Real talent. Uh, they must be able to main remain completely focused on their combat objectives, taking out one opponent after another. And the infantry's duty is to shield such valuable assets from any attack, with their bodies if necessary. Greybore arches an eyebrow and smirks skeptically. You're acquiring a powerful but extremely vulnerable weapon. 
If we're not up against idiots, our enemies will seek our weak spot and hit us there. That's exactly what I would do. Grey boar? They can use their heads rather than just shooting wildly. Soldiers think the main thing is just to hit the target quickly and accurately. Doesn't matter what kind of target it is. If it's an enemy, it's good enough for them. But when you hunt dangerous prey alone, you can't help but smarten up. You learn to spot the leader in a crowd and count and count the guards. Count the guards, figure out who will have the time to take an arrow for the leader and who won't. And you do your work from as far away as you can, so you don't have to put yourself at risk for no reason. Which is why my colleagues in trade will, will outclass any soldier. If you hire professionals, they won't shoot volleys into the army enemy infantry with, with abandon. They'll take out every single spellcaster and officer hiding behind the infantry and pay you off for, the, for your investment before the enemy even reaches the front ranks of your army. Captain Odin, can slingers compare to experienced archers? Of course not. A sling is not an accurate weapon, but it's cheap and easy to learn. Slingers, slingers training is, a, is inexpensive and brief. Any commoner, commoner can pick up the basics and will be able to bring a large number of ranged troops onto the battlefield. Their number will compensate for their lack of skill. Sila's expression darkens. Untrained, practically unarmed peasants in the rear. A perfect target. Everything is clearer to me now. I actually like all of them but the slinger option. So we're going to go see what the effects will be. The main archery range provides weekly recruitment for growth for rangers. A ranged unit capable of defending themselves in close combat. All archers are promoted to ran rangers. Mm-hmm. So it's just a straight up bonus, really, upgrade. Well, they, they have uh, ranger proficiencies and all that stuff. Now, marksman, 25 hit points. So same, only one hit point more. Masterwork composite log bows, 24 to hit. 34 to 41 damage. Which is a lot more than Rangers. Marksmen seem pretty good. Let's see about hunt heads headhunters. Uh, 50 hit points, plus 17 javelins, 25 to 30 damage. I kind of like the headhunter idea. Although snipers are really good too. I, I'm I'm I'm. I'm Leaning, I was always leaning towards the snipers. I am weary of maybe always picking Reggie's option here, but I mean, Reggie and Barrett kind of have the same philosophy with war, right? He wants a well organized army, well disciplined army, that kind of thing, which head headhunters are not. Rangers could be good too. Right, I, I do think the idea of having your Your ranged units effective in melee too is useful. We're gonna go with the snipers though. Reggie nods silently. I hope these measures will be enough to repel Korra's onslaught. If and if not, those who come to take our place will learn from our mistakes and fare better. I think that was the right choice. Okay. We are done with, uh, I think, our crusade management stuff. Let us press on. Let's head out. We want to take Wolgif's coming with us. Um, let's take Reggie. We haven't really taken him with us recently. Uh, Sasiel either. Take him. Um, Ember. And... Lan. We didn't really get to do much with land. We haven't taken it much since we've got Arushale, so let's take land with us. Yeah. Go with that group. And with this group, we will be heading north. Oh, we got more stuff on the crusade thing? Jesus. Uh, the oh, yeah, this is just saying we, we did that.
Enchanting the Crest of the Fallen Knight. Ooh, that's going to be interesting, I think. First Blood. One of the officers has been bringing recruits to the prison so that they could fight weakened captives and kill them. He wanted to prepare the newcomers for their first battle, but unfortunately, during one of the training sessions, one of the soldiers got killed and everything came to light. Uh, yeah, forbid. What's it give us? Good adds 750 leadership points. Yeah. We do not approve of that. This option is unavailable because you don't have Windwog among your... She could have become a companion. Oh, no. Oh, I feel bad. Because now you guys aren't going to be able to see that. I just... Oh, I don't know. Forbid touching the prisoners. I don't think we're going to reload it, but... Damn. The cruel treatment of the prisoners tarnished the honor of the Crusaders. Many of the soldiers were inspired by the commander's noble actions. Cool. Alright. That's where we're going to end it today, guys. Uh, we have killed Windwag. She's no companion of ours. We have a couple of really tough armies out there, including a level 7 army coming at us. Uh, that's more than a little worrisome. We're going to need to uh, definitely get our act together with our army. Uh, but we'll manage that, I hope, by the next episode or by the time they get here. Until the next episode, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I'll catch you later. <laughs>